Hello! As a follow-up from my previous video, today I'm going to be painting this box that I found on the side of the road. Someone had thrown it out and I thought it would be great to use as an inbox for mail and pamphlets that get chucked into my studio and are left all over the bench. It's got lots of little frozen stickers stuck to it that will not easily come off. So first thing first, I do need to get rid of all the extraneous stickers and tapes that are on top of this box. Here we go, I've sanded the whole thing, I've scraped all the stickers off. It's looking pretty good. There are a couple of slight areas where you could still see the stickers, but I've sanded it back. And now to paint the entire thing black, my favorite part. <laughs> so on with a nice coat of that black decorative primer by Langridge, which is a company that's in Melbourne. I really like this primer. It's similar to black gesso, I think it just is a bit thinner, but otherwise is incredibly opaque and it dries with a nice satiny matte finish, very smooth as well. So you can quite often get away with one coat, but for this box I think I ended up doing a couple of coats for most of it. It is a bamboo box and so it was quite slick even though I had tried to scuff it up as much as possible with sandpaper. I think I'd missed a few areas so the paint was skating off it in a few places but a second coat just made everything so much better. And I pretty much left the box entirely black because my intention is to cover it with some paper rather than painting on it again. I just thought I'd do something a little bit different and you'll see that shortly once I've finished painting this box. Really even just painting it black was a vast improvement. While that's drying, I pulled out my basket drawer of scrapbook paper. As you can see, I have a pretty big stash of it. So I'm going to go through here and see what I can find to put onto the outside of the box. Okay, well I found four packs of themed collections, so I've narrowed it down to these. And I will try and decide which ones I'm going to go for. I have used some pieces of the paper out of them, but I still have quite a lot left. And I'm just trying to use up some of these papers so I can slowly get through my stash. I'm trying not to buy any more paper. It's very difficult sometimes because they're so pretty. How can you resist them? And I tend to see these on sale every so often, which is when I pick them up. But I guess it is definitely time to make use of some of this paper and stick it on that box. Okay, I'm liking the look of the anthology collection of paper, especially these two sheets of butterfly paper. I think there should be enough here to cover the edges of the box. And there's a sticker sheet in here. Those are awesome. So I might use them or I might just leave those. We'll see. I also got to use my brand new scissors and paper cutter. Woohoo! And it took me a little while to figure out once again how to use one. It's been ages, but you can see I'm cutting up that butterfly paper and that was the backing, which is not very exciting. So I wasn't bothered about losing that side. I opted to use double-sided tape, which I stuck directly to the box because if you use glue, sometimes it can make the paper buckle up a bit and it won't be nice and smooth against the wood. So the double-sided tape is just a much better solution for that. And it took me a while to line it up, but I did it pretty well on that side. I don't think I did it quite as nicely on this side. I think there was a slight wonkiness to the paper, but it's pretty close. And I think unless you knew it was there, you're probably not going to notice that. So I haven't really mentioned it this year, but I am trying to use up some of the supplies in my studio, especially the papers, just because I have a lot of them and they're really pretty. So it seems a waste to not actually use them. So I'm cutting up the second sheet of butterfly paper here for the shorter sides of the box. 
and I did have a bit of leftover paper, some of which I've already stuck into my art journal, so that's all right. And I'm just making the last cut here. Here's the butterfly side, and here's me pulling off all of that double-sided tape. It's so satisfying. Now you can see I've got a little bit at the top which is still black, and that's because the handle was in the way and I didn't want it to look funny, so I've just put the paper underneath it. And then I'm using those butterfly stickers, yay, <laughs> to stick them on the black part of the box at the top. I think this was actually a pretty good solution and I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's also quite nice to see a little bit of the box painted black as well. You can see I missed a tiny little bit under the handle. I'll go and fix that at my leisure. <laughs> And for the handle itself, it felt like it needed something. So we were out the other day and I saw in the bargain bin these three rolls of glittery tape, a gold, silver and a rose gold. So I went for the gold because I felt it matched the color scheme of the butterflies. But of course, I could not find a single roll of washi tape that actually was the same width as the handle. So I had to trim it down a little bit and also use two pieces, which left a bit of a seam on the handle. Kind of annoying, but not much I can do about that. And I did work around this a little bit. I also have to give Nick credit where he said that the glittery gold would look good with the butterfly paper. He was right on this one. I think it looks really great. It just took me an age to actually stick it down properly and I did have to trim off the corners. They are a little bit wobbly. I might get the blade on it but I was a bit scared about cutting my hand so I just used the scissors for safety and it's mostly okay. It's not perfect but yeah, just don't look too closely at it. <laughs> I'm fairly sure that all of my crafting projects have at least one flaw in them, but I guess that adds character. I tried to put this washi tape on the top because I quite like the design. It would not stick to that glitter. Of course, it looked like it stuck for a while, but it slowly rolled off, so I ended up taking it off. And then I put on some of this liquid glitter just to try and hide that seam a little bit. It didn't work too badly. I mean, you could still see it a little bit, but hey, it's okay. I can live with that. And then, of course, on to the other side and a whole bunch of trying to peel off the backing off that tape. Oh my gosh. It's not quite a washi tape. It's a bit thicker than that. I will have to think of another use for the silver and rose gold tapes as well. I do like it, it's so nice and bright, and the glitter does not come off it, it's very well stuck on there. Once again I had to trim that tape up a bit, and I did put those little offcuts into my art journal as well, so nothing got wasted. This one I didn't quite get it right, you could see there's a little bit of black showing at the top of it, I was a bit wobbly in my cutting. Oh well, never mind, it's all part of its character. <laughs> At least that's the story I'm sticking to. <laughs> I did actually have a lot of fun with this and it was nice to decorate something that was pretty much going to be crushed in a machine and I also had that piece of washi tape which I ended up sticking to the top. It really didn't want to stick up there very well either so off camera I put some Mod Podge on it and stuck it down like decoupage. I just wanted to break up the black of the top handle. A little bit because also the rest of it is left black and it just gives a little bit more interest but I decided that was everything I wanted to do to this box and here it is in all its glory I'm really happy with how this came out and I enjoyed using my papers to decorate this I think it looks really effective and because it's not going to be leaving my studio it doesn't matter if it's not waterproof or anything like that it's just going to function as a little box to put in some pamphlets and other letters and things when I get them in the studio. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all again really soon in my next video. Swatch you later. Bye!